Right, what we're going to do is look at exoskeletons. We're going to look at what drives the system. We're going to look at how to actually approach this. And I know what you'll probably think, it's a human body. How hard can it be to drive it? Humans are a very sophisticated um, organism. We have a lot of things going on inside of our bodies and we aren't simply just a hinge or we aren't simply just an axis that can move around particular ways. We've got to approach this smartly, safely, and then think about how we're going to build it. So let's strip this back because driving something like a knee, uh, the entire body or the core, as it's known as, can be very sophisticated. So we're going to look at the arm. We're going to think about a problem within the arm and how to approach this. So let's picture this. I'm holding my arm out and I'm holding two kilograms. Typical to two kilograms is something that you, a, a bag of sugar that you would buy from the supermarket. As you're holding it, that kilogram, that uh, weight is pushing down. You can feel it. Your arm's resisting against it. And the more your arm, arm sticks there, the more it's going to start to shake because the muscles are getting tired. Now, rather than me just using this hypothetical, let's start drawing it and let's take a look at actually how to really start solving this. Because there is actually two major problems in what we're thinking about. So, first line, let's call this my bicep. It's bicep, this area here is going to be my elbow, which is to here. We're then going to do another line. This line now is my forearm. And um, for this assumption, what I'm actually going to assume is that my wrist is rigid, just for us to think about supporting around the elbow, just for this. So I'm going to presume that my, my wrist is held solid. I'm going to put an arrow onto it. Now to build up this example of what we're talking about, I'm going to assume two kilograms to be on it. And you kind of go, okay, so yeah, fine. We need to convert this into something else now. So what we do is we can multiply this by 9.81, or 10 for argument's sake. And um, 9.81 is the gravity, is all of our gravity. So what we do by doing this is we convert this to force. So we'll say 2 multiplied by 10. Uh, if I had a calculator, because I'm murder with doing this in my head, this is obviously going to be 20 newtons. Now, we call it Newtons after the famous physicist, Isaac Newton, who proposed how force is calculated. So, we now know. Now, let me, let me just wipe this out. I've converted my um, 20 kilos to 20 Newtons. Now, when we call it 20 Newtons, we actually refer to this as force. And I know I've probably just said this, but if I say F is equal to 20, now, this gets very good. So, we've now, got a f we've now got a value for our force. So let me just put that arrow in. I've got F acting down. This is where it becomes interesting. So as this pushes downwards, my arm's resisting that, that bag of sugar. What's happening is my bicep is trying to resist against it. This is created like a rotational force but we don't call it rotational force. What we actually do is we take the elbow. Now this is me just roughly, get, roughly guessing where my elbow is. And we take an arrow between the two and we make this lowercase r, so small r, being radius. And I know what you're thinking, so what? If I take my radius, then multiply this by my force, what I actually end up with is something called torque. Torque is how we select motors. So when we buy something like a, a servo motor or like a, a DC motor that you might see on a remote controlled car, this is how we select them. We select them based on what torque it can produce and how well it can actually do it. Now, this is just one of the elements of the problems. There's one more extra bit that we've got to think about. So, let's get back to this again, back to the bag of sugar. Now, uh, if I just stick a motor on my arm, <laughs> which 
I'm not going to do that because that would be crazy. But if I stick a motor on my arm, and let's say this motor is going to go here. Now, just for argument's sake, let's draw a little shape so you can see where that motor is. Motors, any motor, is going to move round. Now, this is where it's incredibly important that you do not make this mistake in it, as a designer. If you notice here, this is my elbow. This is where my elbow can move. Notice here, this is where the motor can move. These two are out of sync. They are not running together. So this means if I was to just power a motor on here and a motor on here, I would actually injure my arm. The weakest of the two would probably um, fail. So it would, it would break or you'd end up with some level of injury. Um, and what we aim to do is to actually try and come up with a special system that will almost cup round the arm and to cause the arm to physically lift. Right, let's move on and let's actually take a look at the build of the skeleton. So now we've had a look at the, the drawing for it. We've had a look at how we're going to approach this, how we're going to support the bicep, how we're going to support the forearm. Now we really need to start thinking about how we're going to actually drive this and how it's going to move like we want it to. So, first, this is going to sit on here. So it's going to sit against the actual forearm itself. This is the, the lower piece of that drawing. Here, um, you'll find that you've got multiple pieces. We've got, the, we've got the bicep. We've got what is known as the rod end. So um, if you're unsure what that means, if you look at the end, you'll notice that there is actually a disc in a disc. So if I push it, you'll notice it spins round. Now above, you'll notice that there is a prototyping, well they call this a prototyping breadboard. On here, you will find some key things. First thing, you'll find the microcontroller. This is a microcontroller, which is a very commonly used, known as an Arduino Nano. We're gonna be using two pieces of code, piece by piece. And what you'll also find on here is that this has been pre-wired. Also on here, you'll find a little USB attachment. This is gonna provide us with our all important power how this is actually going to be powered when we actually get this together. Finally, we have our all important robot muscle. We have the strength, we have the servo, and then above we have a rechargeable power bank. This is a five volt rechargeable power bank, which is going to provide all the power we need to make sure this works. So let's get to the build. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the bicep, and I'm going to start bringing together the components. So we have the motor mount. So you'll see the servo motor and the battery power pack. Now you'll notice on the actual uh, arm itself, we've got these little features. It's covered all the way through. Now an important one is here. And let me just show you above here. You'll see here we have the point where that interfaces. And hopefully, the way I've designed this, it should nicely sit into place. So let's bring this together. So I bring this in. Now I'm just gonna tilt my wrist, both sides, bring it across like this. And then I'm gonna gently, gently, bring this up and just place two fingers. And you'll notice if this is sitting correctly, now let me spin this around because it's important for everyone to see. If this is sitting correctly, what you'll see is that that little uh, cheese piece is sitting actually in the part to help us on the construction. What I'm going to do is take one of my, one of my bolts and I'm going to place this through the hole. Followed with one of the nuts. And simply, just for this moment, I'm just going to place this in position. Now, what I've used, um, if anybody has one of these, makes life so much easier. This is an 8mm socket. 
Now the reason I'm using this, it just makes it easier for gripping it. So I just push it over the nut and then just tighten it up. So there's our first bolt in position. If this is correct, what you should be able to do is simply hold this and it not move. Now I, I always, to be sure, because this is all about, this is, this is great, but it's about the safety as well. So what we do is we place another one. Place this actually on the inside. So I'm just gonna just push this through the hole onto the other side. And what you'll find is it should poke out the other side like that. What I do now, take the nut, which is accompanying this bolt, and I'm just gonna gently place this into position. All I'm doing now is just tightening up that all important bolt. Once you feel a, a, a tension on it, we're good to go. What you should get now is a system or an assembly that we can't move. We've now got our bicep. We've now got our motor. We've now got our drive. We've got our first steps in how we're gonna do this. What we're gonna do now is move on to the forearm. And this is gonna be the next point of that you could support someone's arm with. This is our forearm piece. This is the brackets, the support brackets that um, I hoped would work, but they didn't work as well. So this is my version. As your version will have little strap links, makes it a lot easier to be able to apply this. And what we need to do is put on some cool protection. So I'm gonna take my blast plate mounts and I'm gonna hold this against the forearm piece. Now, what's important here is you uh, all need to be clear about where I'm going. So let's take a look at these two holes. This is the front and this is the back. And then what we're gonna do is just place this. So this little back end sits in line with this area here. So what I'll do is grab my bolt and I'm gonna place my bolt into the hole. Another bolt, and what I'll do is now bolt to the back end here. Again, I'm just gonna use my trusty socket to make my life a bit easier. And you'll feel a little bit of tension. Don't go overboard. You don't need to go too um, uh, insistent to get it super tight. What I'd say, is just screw it until um, you feel it engaged. So you feel it resist a little bit. So this is the first phase of the build of the, 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 the forearm. You notice the blast plate mount sits here. What we've now got is we've got the lower mount. This sits just beneath. If I remove this, see these two lower holes? These two lower holes will guide in your nuts and bolts. Again, just going to uh, bolt this into position. So again, place that in and screw this in. Gentle on the uh, engagement so it's not too tight and uh, then you'll prevent any damage that could happen. Finally, the second plate. So place this over the top. Now, if you're unsure about where this sits, I'm just gonna show you. Down the blast plate mounts, we've got four key bolt holes here. This is gonna hold this nicely in position. Again, get myself a nice, good sized bolt. I'm gonna place this through the hole. And just so you can clearly see this, it's come all the way through the hole. What we want to be able to do is not just support it, um, we also want to help drive it. Bolts in, we've got it locked into place. Now I could use any of these. This is about holding it in position, ensuring that it's gonna be okay. So I'm probably gonna use this hole. I'm gonna flip this round. And again, just put it on my nut. They're only to secure the position. Now, let me just hold this so you can see where we are. We're now nearly at the end of the forearm. This is the wrist, and here 
is the elbow. What you'll notice is this piece. Now, I'm going to place the forearm down for a moment because um, this piece is vital. This feeds through to the forearm. The idea is, is that if my elbow sits here, what I want to do is have two points that have um, like a, they call it a rod end, and it's basically a ball in a ball that can move. And what it's gonna allow it to do is move around my elbow. So what this does is it allows us to suspend off the elbow and, and have them rod ends, them balls in balls. And we have this little L bracket. This little L bracket is gonna allow us to connect this to the forearm and also to the elbow. This hole is where our elbow mount is gonna sit. Now you'll notice if it's the right way around because what can be confusing is, is it right? So if I hold this against, you'll notice it's sitting really low. You kind of think, no, that can't be right. So if I, sit, if I put this the other way around, what you'll notice is that it's sitting almost flush or equal to the hole that's passing through. That's how it needs to sit. So I'm gonna take my nut, place my nut through the hole. So I'm just gonna simply push it through like that. So what we've got now is we've got the, the uh, bolt that's passed through and gone all the way through to the other side. Taking my mount, place my mount into position like so. And I'm now simply going to place the nut on the back of my uh, mount piece. We've come to this position. We're going to move the elbow mount with this small extrusion piece through the base. And it's going to sit like that. So what I'll do is now, so many bolts on here. <laughs> and I'm gonna push this through. Now, based on your arm, you'll find that this piece is adjustable. It can move left or right. And this allows you to move to get the most comfort. Um, if you do get that wrong and get that in the wrong position, don't worry, it's not gonna lead to any type of damage or anything like that it just might feel a little bit strange. When you first feel it move, you might think, or you, it might just move a little bit odd. So you can move that forearms in position. We've now got the blast plates in, we've got the elbow in, and now we can start to look to bring these pieces together. So what we see now is we've got the bicep. Biceps in position. We've got this rod end sitting here. So what we want this to do is to move fluently across. What I need to do is, if we look at the actual rod end, you'll notice that it's, it's, as we say, flush. It is flat, it is equal. What we need to do is make a bit of space in between the rod end and here, or else what's gonna happen in it if, it's, if it's completely flat, when we go to move it, it's gonna stick, and it's gonna be a bit rubbish, never gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is just undo these. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sneaker, I'm gonna be cheeker. I'm going to um, use a bolt to allow me to create that gap. You could use a washer or you could use a spacer. Um, if you're unsure what a, a spacer is, you've probably seen them on many TVs where you've got gaps, where you've got small gaps that have been made by little bits of rubber. Now I'm just using this nut to do this. So I'm just going to screw the nut in. So what I'll do is just push my elbow on, like so. And all we do here is we, is we use the next nut. And what this now does is, I'm, I'm gonna show you this a little bit closer in a moment. If we look, if I tilt this, and you can see it's actually moving like this and it's moving around a, 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 a what we what we call a pivot point here but this means if i manually pull this it allows for something as primitive as my arm my elbow to always maintain its position the arm exoskeleton is now almost complete we've now got this the rod end itself taking the same inspiration so the nut and bolt 
I just want to give it a little bit of space and it's because when this moves it's going to be moving around and the one thing that's holding it the one thing that's holding its position is the arm itself so I, I, I want to make sure that any assistance, any assisted behavior that this um, exoskeleton gives is, is it, it helps with the person's joints, not against them, or else we do possibly get in a position where we could hurt someone. Again, using my trusty thumb tightening, just bring them together. Finally, Rod end over the top, and I am just going to connect up the nut. This should be able to almost freely kind of move. So you should have, a, you should be able to draw little circles, if you will. Now the big bit, the exciting bit, the one bit that I love. I love this bit, bringing the final piece together, bringing it all into one piece. I'm going to place my bolt right the way through the elbow. I'm gonna add nut, because if you remember, we need that space. We need it to ensure that um, we don't get the, the rod end and the elbow conflicting or uh, 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 constricting each other from moving. So I'm just gonna tighten this up. So use the thumb tightening. Again, I'm just using the other side to bring this back, and I'm gonna push this through like that. If you've got this right, what it should now want to do is almost fall to one side. See how that fell? And then finally, let's add the nut on the elbow. So that is the first stage of the build.